Asterisk what you put up with, you end up with. What you tolerate, you perpetuate. Be in it or don't. Back and forth will end in disaster. You 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 h h h h boy. You are hitting close to home there buddy xd. Compatibility is different from attraction, and even love. Make sure your individual ideas of an ideal life can be aligned. My last ex was amazing. We shared the same interests, great sex, she came from a good family, etc. Dot. Unfortunately we discovered that despite all the goodness, we were not at all compatible in terms of how much time we like to spend with each other. She liked her distance, I liked being close. We realized we couldn't get past this extreme difference, and so I made the extremely difficult decision to end things. Dot. It's been over a month and I'm still sad. But I know this temporary sadness is 100x better than either one of us being stuck in an unhappy relationship due to being incompatible. Make sure you're in love with the actual person, not your idealized version of them that exists only in your head. I'm in love with a girl who is a total asshole to me, but the version of her I have created in my head is perfect, we are also not dating. Don't not communicate for fear of making someone upset. Speak your truth and talk shit out. My biggest issue. It feels like I'm walking on eggshells and when I do talk about my problems I come out more confused and gaslit. It's okay to lose a relationship. Along the same lines, a relationship ending is not the same as a relationship failing. If it made you happy, if you learned from it, if it was supportive while it lasted, if you parted as friends, if you had good experiences together, any and all of these things are successes. Sometimes things run their course, or circumstances change, and it's time to move on and that's the right and best thing to do. Don't accept a break, if it's a relationship issue you solve it together, or you break up if either one of you is unwilling to work towards a solution. This obsession with the break is so weird. I'm of the opinion that disagreements and challenges should be approached as an opportunity to come closer together, and if that fails, it will be become an ending point. You never know which it will be, but you have to take the chance. The concept of a break seems like a way to sidestep the risk of the relationship ending at the cost of growing as a couple. Rather than get uncomfortable and actually talk about the problem and find a solution together which may or may not work, they rather spend some time apart and try to forget the issue until they start missing each other and get back together and never actually have the relationship develop. Never make someone your everything because if you lose them, you're left with nothing. You need other things to make yourself happy and live a fulfilling life. You need friends, hobbies, goals, etc. OMG I needed to hear this. It will never happen again. Be comfortable with your own quirks. If you're not comfortable, then you can't expect your other half to be comfortable with it. In my case, overthinking and unbiased anxiety. The openly weird ones are the honest ones. Don't stay out of loyalty, obligation, or guilt. Stay because you genuinely want to. Along the same line, don't set yourself on fire to keep her warm. Greater than don't set yourself on fire to keep her warm. Oh so that's what it was. Do what you want, is a dare, and not permission. And a lesson to not play games with me. The value of self-worth. Don't make them a priority if all you are is an option to them. Recognize that and walk away and find someone who is just as excited to be with you as you are to be with them. Apply this to all relationships too. Your self-esteem will suffer and spiral out of control if you give your time to people who don't think you are a really cool person. Don't hang out with friends who don't value you. Don't hang out with family who treat you like they're doing you a favor by being around you and don't stay with a partner who acts like you are lucky to be with them and they can drop you any second. While hilarious, the phrase, I'm sorry you feel that way, is not a diplomatic salve. I'm sorry you feel that way, is an attack veiled as an apology. Don't ignore your gut instinct. This one is normally true but if you have anxiety then it can be tricky. Your trust is theirs to maintain. Your jealousy is yours to restrain. I love this. Thank you. Do not overinvest. Match the giving and receiving of emotions and material things. 
don't trust someone 100% until you know them better and watch out for red flags. Like where they toged her with someone when they started dating you, that is, monkey branching. Also, go with your gut feeling. If something feels off, it probably is. Amen to all of this. This is sound advice. If she wants out, just let her go. So much easier said than done, especially if you're codependent. I always recommend just blocking each other as this makes the whole process less likely to end in serious drama. Don't lie about anything. I do this with my wife. No secrets ever. Causes some friction sometimes, but totally worth it. Don't save her. She don't want to be saved. No role models. Asterisk if she wants kids, and you don't, or vice versa. Neither of you is going to change their mind. Asterisk if everything feels like a favor or compromise, it's not going to last. Asterisk you're her boyfriend, not her therapist. There's a limit to how much you can help. Aw shit, where were you for my last relationship? The instant she lays a hand on you the relationship is over. Yes. My ex-wife constantly yelled at me, bossed me around. Then she threw pizza at me. That was it. Went and filed for divorce next day. Much happier now that the house is quiet. I can get done what I need to get done without being harassed and belittled. It's quite wonderful. I wonder who she's yelling at now? You can be okay without a partner. This helps you get a good partner. It can also help you not know how to be in a relationship with someone. I've been alone for so long that being in a relationship now, which is a very normal thing to want, do, feels like it's not worth the trade-off compared to how easy living alone is. But I don't want to end up alone for the rest of my life because I liked being alone too much and got used to it. If she cheated on someone to be with you, she's gonna cheat on you to be with someone else. The guy you don't have to worry about, you 100% have to worry about. People project their actions on you. Listen to this advice. I've lived it twice. When I'm pissed off I say. When they behave poorly and disrespectful I'll say. When something needs to change I'll say. I'll never suffer in silence again. This is so true. I feel like I bottled everything up for so long that it started to numb me out. So unhealthy. Say how you feel and figure it out. It is better to say something than nothing. It's not me versus her, it's both of us versus the problem. Don't ever, under any circumstance, go on a break when dating someone. My GF and I took a break. When we had a couple months of dating, I was scared. We had a really good relationship but she had been struggling with mental health issues, anxiety, depression moments. It was getting worse and worse and she just broke. It's like the light inside her was turned off. She changed. She'd spent every night crying, sleeping all day. Her family was worried too even though we were not together I was always caring for her, she didn't have many friends. Fast forward some weeks later, she decided that it was a time for a change, and get some help, stop isolating herself, and she asked me if I could help her, and that she'd do her best to be better and asked me if I wanted to be her boyfriend again I accepted. And she did get better, a lot, we got her some help, and she overcame her issues, it's been a year and a half since that, and we're as strong as we've ever been. Sure most breaks can be due to cheating or stuff like that, but sometimes not.